How's it going folks? This is Caleb Ragnar. I'm over in South Windsor today. We're taking a look at a 2023 Jayco Seismic. This is the 405 from that toy hauler series here. Just showing we do have that handrail stepping on up into the unit. Now there are some pre-drilled holes here on those actual entry steps for you to be able to add an additional handrail if needed. For your steps, they are going to float right in place. We can see we do have that blue underglow light located right there, as well as your awning lights, which you can faintly see there. Now, at least for these legs, you're gonna have this little lever here to be able to push in and individually adjust your legs right here. The actual stairs themselves are going to tuck all the way into the unit. You'll definitely wanna get some kind of like little hand broom there to be able to kind of sweep everything off it will get very dirty inside this unit but they're going to just go right inside that unit and rest and you'll be able to lock up the whole door now heading on inside we're going to start going uh over everything on the interior here this right here is going to be that friction hinge for the stairs so you probably will kick it a lot to sound like a cowbell we do have the fire extinguisher right here and just moving along the sidewall here in this first slide out right here we've got the three recliners you are going to have on each end so not the middle one electronic controls for heat you'll have the accent light underneath and the massage setting as well now this is going to come with those tv dinner trays that are going to go in the cup holders would recommend while storing these underneath the bed. They will easily be able to pop out and potentially go bouncing all over your camper and damaging some items. Middle seat here, you're gonna have this plastic pole that's going to allow you to recline that center seat. This cushion right here will fold forward as well. It's gonna show two more cup holders. You'll have a charging station in here as well. And also to give you access to where the chairs are actually plugged in, in case those were to ever come unplugged and prove uh, this thing is bolted to the floor, so it would be quite a pain in the butt to have, try and have to get that out. Now for your blinds, you are gonna have those pull down black blinds throughout the unit. We've got a light switch here for those overhead lights. And then for the windows, right here on the edge, you're going to have these, you'll push in both those plastic clips. You'll see you have one setting right here to lock it in and one at the top. Now for the side one here, the one that is gonna be going horizontally, you'll just be able to push out and open up that window. We'll go over everything in this area before getting into that back lot. Now you are gonna have a lot of cabinetry over here. You're gonna have your plug for the electric fireplace. This electric fireplace is going to be roughly 5,000 BTUs. You're gonna be able to turn it on to enjoy those lovely lights. You'll have that little fire display. It will kick out heat from your electric. Now you do have the option to be able to put this on a timer up to five hours. You'll be able to change the color of those flames and be able to adjust your temperature as well as shutting it off entirely just to enjoy some of that ambiance for the actual colors. Above that, we're gonna have our radio system. Now you'll have your power button toggling between AM and FM. You'll be able to switch between your disc and then there'll be a couple of other modes as well that you'll be able to play music through. There'll be a Bluetooth option. You'll be able to adjust your time through the clock setting, as well as the speakers for the inside, zone one, and the exterior, zone two. A couple of other modes is gonna be, you can hook it up to the TV audio, you'll have HDMI, and a couple of other plugs, the FR, that you'll be able to connect through the television or your actual USB or HDMI auxiliary here right up on the front. Now you will have that TV up above, uh, at least on this unit, we've kept the remotes all in here. You're gonna have a remote for your radio with all those same controls. Smart television in here, so no need for a DVD player. You can hook up your streaming services. So if you did need to access a DVD player, uh, very tight area up here, not sure you'd have to get a certain size, but you'd be able to run that wire through this hole right down here to connect to the back of the TV. Now your wine guard plate right here. This is going to have your TV connection as well as auxiliary and satellite. And then you'll have that little button right there, which is going to turn your wine guard on and off. So if we are hooking up to satellite cable, we will wanna shut this switch off so that we can disconnect from our air connection through the antenna, which will interfere with cable when we're trying to hook up to that actual connection. 
You've got your plug up over here as well as the TV to hook up another device in here. And again, all that cabin tree up above. Now you are gonna have one more shelf up ahead here, which is gonna be right next to your loft area. Now we do have a ladder located right here that's gonna be able to connect and allow you access up into the loft. There's gonna be some push button lights up there. And you can also see that there is one, oh, two lights, and you'll have that one duct from the air conditioner. Now, other side of the cabinetry, you'll have plenty over here. Three separate spots for all that additional storage, which is gonna be right next to our three burner stove. So this is gonna be gas powered only. You're gonna have that glass coating, which is not tempered glass. Do not cook on the glass. Do not turn this on while that glass cover is over the actual stove top. And when traveling, we'll wanna make sure that it is down nice and flat. Now going from left to right, we are going to have our igniter. So this is what's going to provide that spark to all of our burners. Unless you're OCD like me, this can sit in any position you want, but just make sure that we are only turning clockwise. If you turn counterclockwise and go against what those arrows are pointing towards, you can damage that igniter and will have to use some form of a lighter or match to light both your burners and the stove itself. Now, at least in here, little safety setting when you have the lights on, it's going to turn red when there's propane running out of that actual burner, which we have the gas off now, so we're not gonna play around with that. But just to show you, even with that on, and the lights off, it will let you know, hey, there's propane coming out of one of these top three burners. So in case you bumped into it by accident, oh no, you'd be able to come over here and quickly shut it off. Now, at least with the oven, when starting this, it's red, but propane is not running through this line because it's an enclosed space. You have to actually push down on it for that propane to run. Now, when purging this for the first time, um, when either getting the camper or after a lengthy drive, you're gonna probably wanna hold this down 10 to 15 seconds, and then still while holding down, hitting that igniter two to four times until you see, oh, that light's gonna make it a little bit harder to see, but you'll be able to see that you have that actual burner right in the back there to be able to catch fire on. Now you are going to have some storage below as well with this nice size drawer here. Now all of these drawers for Jayco are on 75 pound drawer glides, so you can fit a good amount of cabinetry or a good amount of pots and pans inside of this cabinetry. We've got the Venetian blinds in the back, light ahead, as well as the fan, which if you have the fan on on this, that light's going on. You're gonna be able to pull this down, clean out that filter, you know, multiple times a year if things start getting gross and we wanna make sure that we're keeping things nice and clean so we can have it properly exhausting. As we had pointed out on the exterior, there's gonna be the range hood exhaust opening on the outside. You'll have to open up those clips to, prop clips to properly ventilate everything out. Microwave right above that. And then we'll have some more storage space up as well with the plug for the microwave being located right there. More cabinets over here for your little pantry in that kitchen area. And that's gonna be right next to our 12 volt refrigerator by Furion. Now this is one thing, when those slide outs are closed, it is going to be next to impossible to get inside of this fridge. So plan ahead, plan accordingly. You are gonna have the controls right here to be able to adjust the temperature. There is an off grid mode as you can see there. And then there's gonna be all the way up. So we're at the campground, all the way up. If you're boondocking, traveling down the road, just need to keep things cool and fresh while driving to the next location, you could keep it in the off-grid setting. Freezer space, you're gonna push up on this to open, and then you'll have that freezer space in there. Freezer is gonna cool down quicker than the fridge. And we usually say, hey, we're ready to travel with perishable. We wanna make sure that we are turning that refrigerator on at least a minimum of 12 hours ahead of time. They usually suggest 24 hours. Uh, if you're traveling somewhere, you could definitely get away with maybe throwing some pre-frozen items in the freezer or the fridge, kind of utilizing this component like a cooler. You're able to still carry all that nice, cool stuff with you without having to wait as long. More storage space above. More pantry space here and down below and then we've got one more right next to our converter box with all of our breakers and fuses now it's all going to be neatly labeled right here 
and one of these they will illuminate red if there's something blown so you open this you see a red light you know that you're gonna have to replace those fuses we've got some outlets here that's gonna be right next to the controls for our main air system for the air conditioner and the heat you'll pretty much be able to just toggle between here selecting either fan speed on low or high that'll switch down to the AC which will be on low or high you will also be able to have the air conditioner on auto and then you'll have the heat setting as well and then have it off entirely which we're going to go back to off right now now a little bit of cabinet space on this end and then in here well there is that little shelf above we're going to have systems like our solar charge controller right here uh, definitely read the manual on this uh, you're really not able to control anything really just showing you what the current voltage and amperage usage is on this unit at this particular moment in time. Right here is going to be the controls for your inverter. To turn on, you're going to hold down that power button, let it go. That'll power on the actual inverter. Uh, when plugged into shore power, you won't have to use this. But if we're staying overnight somewhere with no power, we want to be able to turn on the television, turn on the recliners, and utilize some of the outlets in this unit you'll be able to turn this on and utilize that power from your 12 volt batteries to be able to power up some of those 110 volt appliances. Uh, for higher wattage units, um, won't be able to use the AC, won't be able to use the microwave, and you probably would end up tripping the system if you tried plugging in uh, higher wattage appliances like a hair dryer, curling iron, toaster oven, so just being conscious about that. Now right here we're gonna have our control panel. This is going to allow us to view contents of both our gray tanks, our black tank. Now just shown right here, this switch is going to signify, hey, are we looking at the contents of black tank number two or black tank number one? Fresh water tank and the battery level. Now over here is going to be an odometer, I guess you could call it, for the generator showing how many hours it's been run. And then we'll have a contents for our fuel pump. So you'll be able to turn that fuel pump on and be able to view how much fuel we have in there. And that'll also allow you to distribute that fuel from the actual pump outside to be able to fill up your motorcycle or any other toys that you're bringing with you. Now you're gonna have the control for your water pump here. Options to turn on your water heater through either electric or propane, and then a way to start up your generator. You're gonna hold down on this button until that light goes red, and then hold it down in the start position to fire it up. Again, this is going to run off of that 30 gallon fuel tank outside. So if you don't have anything in there, generator is not gonna run. Now we've got controls for interior lights, exterior, exterior two, and then the security light outside as well. Uh, dead switch right here for tank heaters. Now this is something you could have added on later down the line if you chose to. And then we've got controls for the awning to go in or out. And then for the two slide rooms in this room. Now controls for the main slide out are going to be in the master bedroom. And then just pointing out with this AC unit, right now you can see that those ducts are open. If you close them, it'll more evenly distribute that cold air through those ducts in the ceiling. So right now it would mainly just be shooting cold air directly out of this unit here. Now with the island, you are gonna have that pull down faucet right here. You'll have that cover, though I would definitely recommend putting this underneath the sink while traveling so we don't end up having any potential damages from that flying around. And then just pointing out a little bit of space, get that light on, underneath the fridge here, or underneath the island, and then you'll have a good amount of drawers. All right, going on up. Now, just to point out, underneath in here is where one of the intake vents for the furnace is gonna be, which is why it's open there. We're gonna have the railing stepping up into the bathroom. Your main GFCI outlet right here with the test and reset buttons is located here. And then we've got the lights for the bathroom. We've got accent lights around just the mirror here. Sink, a little bit of storage space underneath there. And then one of the switches will be to turn that fan on and off. Now there will be a master switch, so if I hit that, no matter how many times I hit that switch, that fan is not going to come on. You'll be able to open and close manually with this crank right here. And just while traveling, when it rains, definitely want to make sure that this is down. Now you can get a vent cover 
for that vent right there, which would allow you to leave it open 365 days out of the year, even while traveling, just so long as that vent opening is facing away from the direction that you'll be driving. For the bathroom door, you are gonna have this little security latch right there, which we wanna have strapped anytime we are starting to drive down the road. There is the magnet, which will latch, and it's, it's pretty strong. It'll stay on there pretty tight, so might have to give it a good little tug, but again, just making sure anytime we are about to drive, we've got the door latched. We've got the toilet. It will be on the porcelain. Toilet paper holder there. And you're gonna have some more little storage space here on the side and towel holders. For the shower, you're going to have that nice, lovely skylight right above, that seat in the corner, as well as some shelves. Now for the shower door, we are gonna have a latch right here. Wanna make sure that this is locked anytime we are moving that camper so we don't have our lovely glass shower doors shatter within the first five minutes of driving down the road. And aside from that, we've just got the main light switch in here as well. Now into the bedroom we go. We are gonna have a little charging station right here with a bunch of 12 volt connections. You could hook up a 12 volt TV over here if you wanted to put it on the wall. Uh, Jayco does not recommend having anything mounted on the wall over 32 inches while driving down the road unless you have the proper TV mount for it. So best to just say I don't really think you'd get anything over 32 inches on this anyways. Now just pointing out inverter powered outlet. Any outlet with this sticker will be powered by that inverter down below. If it does not have that sticker, safe to say um, it's probably not going to work when that inverter is hooked up. Satellite and cable coax connections. And then you've got lots of drawers going all the way down for all your clothes. Again, 75 pound drawer glides on all of these. Fire exit. This window cannot open unless you want it to fall. So just make sure we are not hitting those red dot knobs right there, those red poles. If it's a fire, hit them. You have a clear exit to get out. Now in this closet here, you are going to have your washer dryer hookups. You would have to remove these shelves to be able to fit the stackable in here. And behind that panel, I do believe is where you would end up cutting for that dryer vent. Now we're gonna see another inverter powered outlet down there on the side of the bed. You are gonna have the windows on both sides of the slide outs. And then at least for those two lights above the bed, they are push button only where this light switch is only gonna control those two on the ceiling, not the slide out. We do have the controls for the slide out located right here, as well as the controls for just this second air conditioner. So there won't be any heat setting on this one, though I do believe it probably pops up. Let's see. Nice, it doesn't even show, so you don't have to worry about any confusion on that. Now switch right here is for the security camera. If you were to end up getting a camera mounted above the doorway on the exterior, this switch would allow you to pretty much turn that on and be able to view it through your monitor while inside of the camper. Another inverter powered outlet right there on the side of the bed. And let's give you a quick look at the closet. Now just with the closet when traveling, we wanna make sure that these are latched fully so we don't have these things swinging around while we're driving down the road. There will be a motion sensor light in here. So at least with this one, let's shut this off and just give you a quick look. Right here, we're going to see we have that switch. There are the two lines, which will represent motion sensor. The circle right in the middle will be off. And the one line will just be always on. I usually just leave them on that motion sensor setting. So you know, hey, when I open it, it's going to turn on. When I close the door, it'll shut off within a minute. Lots of shelving in here. Again, we've got the hookups for washer dryer right here that would run through this port already cut. Bar to be able to hang up coats, dresses, shirts, anything you guys need. And then we'll open from this side just to show you that you do have some more shelves over there as well. Now, at least for under the bed here, you'll have a good amount of storage under here as well. And only thing I usually point out is when lowering it, really make sure that we are supporting it, not letting it slam down. So that way we don't have any chance of potentially damaging that bed frame. For right now, I'm gonna just hit these lights. And we're gonna bring the slide out in really quick, or bring it in. So we're gonna just bring that one right inside now. And then we'll head on into the back garage. 